Hi guys, welcome to UK here. So, Star Wars Squadrons has released and um, I've got to say it's really looking very, very impressive. The performance in VR is incredible and by all accounts in 4K people are still managing to get 120 FPS, maybe even more than that. So yes, things are looking very good. This is an incredibly well optimized game. Unfortunately, the controller configurations is a bit naff at the moment. It's completely broken for a lot of people uh, and I'll show you what's going on in this video today. But first of all, I'm going to explain to you how to set up your uh, Origin Star Wars Squadrons installation to run in VR and I'm using the Oculus Quest via the link cable um, so it will work exactly the same with the Oculus Rift or the Rift S or whatever it is you're planning on using. So first of all the most important thing is open Oculus on your PC or install that if you haven't already installed the Oculus app. Make sure that is 100% up to date. Do the same thing on the Quest. Make sure that you're up to date on that as well. And uh, I'll, I'll put um, a link in the description here to say which version I am running at the moment so that you can know whether you're up to the right version or not. And then simply start running the link from inside the Oculus Quest and it should instantly connect and be running in the Oculus app. Now, the next thing you need to do obviously is install the game itself. So if you install Star Wars Squadrons onto your PC and start it up, just open it up normally. And then you come over here to options. You can press the escape button or just click with your mouse. And to start VR, you literally go into VR settings and toggle VR. Now, if you've got your VR headset on, it should instantly drop you in the game. Uh, and it really is a very, very quick system. Look forward and hold whatever that is to recalibrate your headset, but if you move your uh, joystick, if you have a joystick installed, then it should uh, allow you to figure out what that button is. So I have that bound up here. And that's it. The VR is active, but I highly recommend that when you're setting up your controller, you'll toggle yourself out of this. Uh, so if I come up here, I'll just toggle VR off for the moment. And uh, then you can use your controller or the mouse. It's probably easier to start by using the mouse. So you come up here to your controls, scroll. First thing you need to do, scroll all the way down to the bottom and make sure that your device is being recognized and that you've got them in the order you want them in, because uh, it will just randomly select these in any order. And what you'll find is that when you're binding buttons, let's say that you have buttons one to 30, this one here would be T1, T2, T1, uh, sorry, T1, button 1, T1, button 2, T1, button 3, I can't say that for some reason, and this one would be uh, T2, button 1, T2, button 2, T3, button 3, etc. You get, you get the idea. I don't know why that's so difficult to say, but anyway. Uh, and then you need to come up here to remap controls. Now don't get confused. There's a menu system, there's a hangar and briefing room, and there's a flight system. I'm going to show you this bug first of all. But when you come in here, make sure you're not changing keyboard and mouse or controller. You want the flight stick in order to change. Now, if I reset this to default, you can see that all of this is, is full. The roll, the, the roll right, the roll left, the, roll, the your left, the your right. But unfortunately, what they've done is they've bound roll movement on the joystick to be, uh, to be your movement and vice versa. And it does work in game. I have tested it. If you play it in default, it does work. They've also got the pitch the wrong way around. So the first thing you do is click on this and pitch the way you want. And you can see that it instantly removes this one because it can't have two of any of the same thing. Now, if I try and bind your right, it doesn't work at all. But if I bind your left, you see it's got Z rotate. Now, if I put Z rotate left in here, then you can see that this is still blank and empty and there is no way of binding that at the moment. It's completely broken. Roll axes and uh, roll axis left still cannot put that your right in it is completely broken the throttle is currently bound to my joystick one you can see that uh, if I just come out of this a second you can see that it's got joystick number one um, sorry joystick number one slider up so that's using the throttle on my uh, side stick at the moment but I want to use my x56 so I click it scroll forwards do this one scroll backwards and now you can see that it's controller 2 axis x axis left x axis right easy peasy stuff 
Now you've got these combo buttons. So if I press here and I pick a button, so on controller two, button two, if I want to boost, I press it once. If I want to drift whilst boosting, I press and hold it. So that's what the combo button does. If you don't want to do that, you can bind it independently. Now, there's another issue with the controller setup. So I'm going to warn you about this now. You cannot have important key binds bound to nothing. You can also not have the same key bind bound to the same button. So contextual interaction, basically strangely named, basically means it if you're in menu like this and you want to confirm an action, then this is the button that will confirm the action. You can see it's controller one, button one, which is my fire trigger. But fire is also bound to controller one, button one. OK, now you personally cannot do that. So if you accidentally click that button, oh, no, I've bound it to the wrong thing. No problem. I'll just put it back in. But now this doesn't work. So now you can't have both of those buttons bound to the same thing. There is no way of doing it. You can have one or the other, but you can't have both. So what you're going to have to do is reset to default. You say OK, and then fire is back to button one and contextual interaction is back to button one. They're just going to have to change this. They're going to. I hate how um, game developers try and basically they're trying to idiot proof the system. If I want to bind the same action to the same button, then that's up to me. And if it causes conflicts, that's my fault. But don't stop me from being able to do it. It's a pain in the ass. So let me just bind all this again really quickly. It's very straightforward, really. Oh, here's me forgetting that that one doesn't work. Roll right, roll left. Now, obviously, um, there's a lot of control options here. There really are a lot of control options. Um, and it's going to be personal preference how you set things up. But um, I have at least tried to um, point you in the right direction. I think and hopefully by the time you watch this video that that bug or those two bugs I've just pointed out will be fixed so that they're not an issue. Now, if you, for example, let me, uh, so you have to press back, uh, save and exit. And then if you come into menus here and change this, remember to go to flight stick. Now, this is where things get a little bit more confusing. Let's say, for example, I want to be able to navigate across here using my controller. So when I'm in VR, I don't want to have to take my VR off to look at my keyboard or whatever. So tab left and tab right. At the moment, it's on controller two, button four. So we're going to change that. Oh, actually, it's sorry. Yes, it's remembered my old controls. Um, do I want to reset this? Let's just reset it so I can show you. OK, so this is default. All right. So if you come down here and you want to tab left and tab right and you press tab left and tab right, then that changes it here. Now, in VR, you will see that down here, instead of being a keyboard based instruction, it will be a controller based instruction, but it won't match what you've just changed here. So when you try and use these, they won't work. What you have to do is go back and confirm the changes. Then you can go in and then you can use them to navigate. It has to be done that way around, not the other way around. Um, so what have we got here? We've got menu confirm, menu cancel. What's the back button then? Back is button eight. Now I've no idea what button eight is on my controller. So what you can do is you can open up your Windows uh, menu system and you can um, just type in controller and click on setup USB game controllers. And then if you go to your actual controller and hit properties, then you can see that each of the buttons you're pressing indicates a value on here. So that's the easiest way to figure out which button is which. Um, but be warned, whilst this is open in the background, even though you're focused on this, your actions are still changing the menu in there. So you really do have to be very careful. Probably the best thing to do would be to come out of that and um, just not hit the trigger button because you can quite happily press all the buttons in. Well, no, you can't <laughs> because there are, like I say, there are buttons in here that are bound to things that I don't know. Uh, I don't know what all the buttons are is the problem. So let's come back down here. So button 11 is options. What is that? What is button 11? Is that button 11? That's 13, so that must be 11. 
that takes us back into options and then we can navigate across to controls if you click on button four then you come to this screen and then you can click on change and that brings you back into the control systems it's a bit clunky but it does work it is functional right up to the point where you can't add the your axes on the controller for left and right now um, i'm going to play the game as best i can with my broken controller system and i'm going to try and learn what all of the systems do and then provide a more detailed controller setup system uh, guide to help you out so that you can get the, the absolute most out of your flight system uh, in vr and i must say that the performance in vr is astounding it looks so good and I was a bit concerned about nausea, feeling nauseous in this game. What I have been doing, loops and spins and rolls and all sorts of crazy stuff, haven't felt a single jot of motion sickness, not a single bit. It's been very well optimised. This is impressive, really impressive. And um, I think all VR games are going to have to look at this and basically buck up their ideas on, on, their, uh, on their implementation because as far as the game goes, this is stunning absolutely stunning that being said um, there are some things I'd like to see changed I'd like to see more clickable cockpits I'd like to have more control over my control inputs and I'd like to have more control over the systems that are in the game that's one of the thing actually I can show you this real quickly as a final thing um, if we go back to menu and go to controls you can see here you've got um, throttle input mode. I think the default is set up to step, so it goes up in 10% increments. But if you've got a throttle controller, you're going to want to have it on continuous, so change that there. Uh, these things are going to be stuff that I come back and talk about later. Throttle friction, basically, um, if you turn it off, you have complete control over your throttle. But if throttle friction is on, you don't have sudden acceleration and sudden slowdown. It will be more sort of tapered if you will but power management this is the one thing i think you might want to have a look at you can switch between um, basic and advanced but um, i would highly recommend that you start with basic just to get used to the game and understand the controller system etc by default the flight stick the flight stick system has 50 percent sensitivity on everything and zero dead zones and i've tried using dead zones to fix that input problem honestly it's broken it doesn't work at all it's definitely a software issue and hopefully they'll patch that very quickly but hopefully that will help you out get you up and running that should get you into vr and at least get you some sort of controller support depending on the joystick you're using you may or may not experience that right axis roll i've seen a lot of people mention on the forums that they're having similar but different issues about input axis so it just seems like there's a bug in the system that's breaking all that and it's so frequent that they're going to have to fix it i guess but that's it from me thanks for watching take care of yourselves until next time goodbye